Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is twentieth lecture of this number theory series. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to see some relationship how, or how we can f evaluate this expression. So the problem to be discuss, uh, discussed is this: answer is equals to the summation of a loop which runs from one to n, and each time evaluating the expression GCD of i of i and n. So basically, answer is sum of GCD from all number from one to n with n. If n is equal to five, so of course answer is uh, GCD of one five plus GCD of two five plus GCD of three five plus GCD of four five plus GCD of five and five. This is the whole expression, and we have to evaluate it. So the very straightforward solution is very easy. The brute force solution of this would be: we would initialize the result with zero, of course, and run a loop from one to n each time, uh, adding the result of GCD of i n into the result, and then finally returning the result. Here, GCD is the function that returns GCD or the greatest common divisor of two integers i and n. Now, uh, the complexity, if we see. Here is q times n log n, where q are the number of queries and n log n because of this, because each query is being uh, evaluated in n log n time. Reason: the loop runs for n times, and in the in that loop, for e uh, for each operation, we are uh, calling this GCD function, and GCD function, uh, if we are using uh, Euclid algorithm for GCD the that evaluates GCD in log n time. So the overall complexity for each query is n log n, and there are q queries. So the overall complexity would be q times n log n. Now the question here is, can we do it better? Can we get a better time complexity? So the answer is of course yes. So the same. Expression can be evaluated for q queries in uh, q times square root of n overall complexity. So, since there are q queries, of course, each query must be taking square root of n time. So, overall, we are able to, we will be able to evaluate this expression in square root of n time instead of n log n time. And since there are q queries, so the overall complexity is this. Now, let's take a look. Uh, take a look at some of the important observations. Uh, I'll be taking an example of n is equal to twelve here because uh, taking an example makes things even clear. Now, the first observation here is that GCD of i n, where i runs from one to n, is equal to one of the divisors of n. Which, did, uh, which totally makes sense because GCD is the greatest integer which divides both i and n, which means GCD divides n, which means GCD is the divisor of n. So GCD of i n is going to be one of the divisors of n. Uh, not a big uh, observation, it seems, but this is literally the most important observation. Now. We know that a uh, uh, divisor of n we can evaluate all of the divisor of n in square root of n time. Is that the reason why we said that each query can be evaluated in square root of n time? Well, maybe. Let's move on for the second observation. Now the second observation says before second observation, let me just write down uh, for each number GCD with twelve. For each number from one to twelve, GCD of that number with twelve. So GCD of one twelve is one two two twelve is this and so on. If there is some typo, please uh, let me know in the comments. Now, the second observation says that instead of running a loop from one to n, which we are doing here, what we can do, we can check for each divisor d of n. Uh, and divisor of twelve are 
uh, n here is 12 so divisor of 12 are 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 so instead of running a loop from 1 to n what we can do we can check for each device d of n how many numbers are there i how many numbers i are there such so that the gcd with n is equals to 12 sorry uh, the gcd with n is equals to d so for each divisor d we are going to count how many numbers are there whose gcd with n is going to be d this observation may sound confusing so let's clear with taken uh, with with an example so the number with dark shade you can see the numbers in uh, dark black are the divisors so for 12 the divisor is 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 so instead of running a loop from 1 to 12 what we would do we would evaluate the uh, for each divisor for each divisor so let's start from 1 so for e divisor d that is for one for now how many integers how many numbers i are there so that the gcd with n is equals to d so d is one here so how many numbers are there whose gcd with 12 is equals to one so we see there are four numbers one two three and four whose gcd with 12 is equals to one one five eleven and seven are the numbers whose gcd with 12 is equals to one so there are four numbers whose GCD with 12 is equals to 1. So their contribution in the result would be 1 times 4 because they are evaluating to 1 and there are four numbers which are evaluating to 1. So the overall uh, their contribution in result would be 1 times 4, right? Now for 2, how many numbers are there whose GCD with 12 is equals to 2? We see there are two numbers, 2 and 10 gcd of both of those number is equals to 2 so there are two numbers whose gcd with 12 is equals to 2 so their contribution in the result would be 2 times 2 that is d times count now for 3 3 is another divisor d of 12 for 3 how many numbers are there from 1 to 12 whose gcd with 12 is equals to 3 we see 1 2 there are two numbers 9 and 3 so count is 2 and divisors uh, and they, they evaluate to 3 so their contribution in the result would be 3 uh, three times 2 similarly for 4 there are 2 numbers 8 and 4 that is why count is 2 and divisor is eva they are evaluating to 4 so their contribution would be 4 times 2 similarly for 6 there is only 1 number so 6 times 1 for 12 there is only 1 number so 12 times 1 this is going to be our result if you evaluate this expression you'll see that the sum on the right side which is uh, equal to the answer is also the sum, uh, the result of this expression so we did nothing we simply grouped all of the numbers based on their result so we grouped all of the number based on the result which is one there are four numbers that is why we uh, multiply added 4 times 1 we grouped all of the number which were evaluating to 2 we grouped all of the number which were eva evaluating to 3 4 6 and 12 and all of these numbers are actually divisors of n so if we can somehow get these numbers the count of each group then the overall expression can be evaluated in square root of n times because uh, I can find all of the divisor n in square root of n time. So if we can count the total number of, uh, we can find the total number of elements which are evaluating to 6 or evaluating to 12 or evaluating to some divisor d, then the overall expression, this can be evaluated in square root of n time. So if I show you the code the template that we are going to use uh, the template of this solution it would be something like in q since we are having q queries each query we would be given n right let's take capital n so we need q for each query we are given n now for each n what we would do we would do result is equals to 0 and for each divisor i uh, is equals to 1 
i into i is less equals to n i plus plus if n modulo i is equals to zero which means uh, i is divisor of n so in d1 the first divisor is i in d2 is equals to n by i so as explained in the number theory lectures where we we have studied about how we can find the divisor of n in square root of n time i've explained that each device uh, the divisor appear or the divisor appear in form of pairs or we can form a pair of divisors like for 12 if if i is the divisor then n by i is also the divisor so if n is 12 so if 2 is the divisor of 12 then 12 by 2 that is 6 is also the divisor of 12 that is why if i is the divisor of n uh, n so first divisor we are taking as i other divisor is n by i so if n is actually a perfect square so d2 and d1 may be same so for take an example of 25 so 5 is the divisor of 25 so d1 would be 5 and d2 would be 25 divided by 5 which is equals to 5 again so we we need to make sure that okay uh if d1 and d2 are same we only evaluate it for uh we only evaluate it one time so uh for divisor d1 result would be add result in the result we would add d1 times get count d1 n now get count is the function that would return how many numbers are there from 1 to 12 such so that the gcd with n is equals to d1 so what i am doing here is this uh, a get count function would return how many numbers are there from 1 to 12 uh, such so that the gcd with n which is 12 in this case is equals to 4 so that is what get count function would return so get count function again returns the total number of integers from 1 to 12 so that the gcd with n is equals to d1 its contribution into the result would be d times the count of integers which evaluate to d1 right and again if d1 is not equals to d2 that can happen in case of perfect square as explained earlier so if these two numbers are different so result plus equals d2 times get count d2 comma n that is the total number of integers from 1 to n so that the gcd with n is equals to d2 and finally see how result uh, the question is this get count function the only thing remaining is the is this get count function int divisor sorry int divisor and int n so this is what we would do in the next lecture of course so the question is how we can evaluate this get count function uh, efficiently because if get count function see uh, this loop is running only till square root of n time right if this get count function takes x time to be evaluated then for each query we would take square root of n into x time uh, and since in the slides I have already mentioned that for each query we are going to take only square root of n time which means we must be able to evaluate get count function in constant time and that is a big deal that is really something that is really really important because uh, now we are able to evaluate how many numbers are there how many integers are there one to answer that the gcd with n is equals to some number d1 or d2 so if we can do that or if we can evaluate that in constant time then the overall complexity would be q times square root of n uh, so the question is how we can evaluate this that how many numbers are there from 1 to 12 such so that their gcd is equals to 3 or 4 or 6 or 12 well this is where all distortion function comes into the picture so in the next lecture we will see how we can evaluate get count function using all distortion function and some of the properties of all distortion function and we'll see how the overall complexity would be q times square root of n with some sort of pre-processing
of course so uh, you can search your way around you can find or you can google yourself and that would be a great uh, assignment for you so just go go there and try googling and try to find the solution how we can find how many numbers are there from 1 to n such that the gcd with n is equals to some number say 3 4 or any divisor any divisor d of n if you find such solution just don't make sure you comment that or if you want to really show off your skills you can comment that on the uh, article that i've created for this whole course on the course chef on the discuss.codechef.com so the link of that article i'll be putting in the description of the video so make sure you you post anything related to this assignment into that article not in the dis uh, not in the comment section of this video so thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you